Welcome to Travolting. Hosted by Jeff Sweeney and Stuart Elmore. Covering Shout! Enjoy the episode! Welcome, welcome to another episode of Travolting, Jeff, folks. Jeff, Jeff, you don't have to shout in my face, bitch. <laughs> We're coming in with a hot theme already, <laughs> Jesus. Um, well, yeah. I, I already come in hot because... This is an episode where we have to shout. Oh my God. We're covering <laughs> shout, so we'll be shouting. We're covering shouts. The whole time we're shouting. Can you, if you're going to talk... No, if, I'm not, I'm not actually going to This is that. not going to be the bit? No. The bit's not going to be shouting? No. At random times, I'll have to. You know our audience probably just left already. Yeah, we've literally lost everyone. Come back, please. Um, So we're just going to spend, because you folks have already stopped listening, we're just going to spend the rest of the episode talking about the Kung Fu Panda trilogy. Um, <laughs> I'm a really big fan of Jack Black's performance. Listen, um, Angelina Jolie is Tigress, though. Yes. Can we talk? Though. Can we we talk? Can we talk about Angela Jolie's Tigress? Yes, we can. But you know, we we aren't here to actually talk about Kung Fu Panda, nor Angelina Jolie, but we do want to thank you folks for listening to Angel, Uh, Eyes of an Angel. Eyes of an Angel last week, our most recent, that was terrible. That was really bad. Our most recent episode of Eyes of an Angel. Thank you folks for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this week, we're not covering Eyes of an Angel, we're not covering Kung Fu Panda, uh, we're not covering Ant-Man and the Wasp, nor Aquaman, nor any other movie. Any this... of those good movies you would have wanted us, you would have wanted us to cover. Don't know why I picked those movies, but this week, we are covering Shout. Shout. Yes, as we said in the intro, this week, we are do, shouting do to th- the heavens. Do you think there he has a movie called like Whispers or Whispers <laughs> of the Damned? Or... He better make a sequel to this called Whisper. <sighs> do you think this warrants, I don't think this warrants a sequel. I mean, the box office totals have uh, uh, certainly ended its chances of a sequel. Yeah, right. Um, this did not make any money, did it? It did not. We're, we'll get to that at the end of this episode. Yeah. So, but, Shout. Yeah. To me, 1991. Yes. Um, coming out, you know, Travolta has been trying to get back into, you know, serious acting around this point. This is coming from Eyes of an Angel, which is neon, nigh on impossible to find. Yes, which we found and watched. We found and watched for you, for you, the audience. Yes. We watched it on my VCR player. <laughs> a good episode. Yeah. But, a um, good episode indeed. This movie's pretty accessible. Yeah. Um, it's on Amazon Prime. Yeah. I think the... you can probably rent it at other places, too. You know, uh, so Travolta's trying to get back into serious acting around this point. Yeah. Um, he's not considered A-list in Hollywood anymore. Right. So he's not getting the great offers. He's not getting the great roles. No. So he's basically, at this point, kind of just doing zeitgeisty stuff. Just He's playing like movies that are just other movies, but cheaper. Directorial debut shit. Yeah, kind of that. But like um, Eyes of an Angel and Chains of Gold both felt like they were aping the style of movies at the time but for a lesser budget yeah my like chains of gold felt like an early 90s action movie but without any action right uh eyes of an angel kind of felt like some weird like mob slash dog movie riff you know early 90s there's a lot of dog movies yeah score says he was kind of having a renaissance with mob movies so it makes sense he would do that he would do... Tar- two- Tarantino yeah. popped off already, right? He didn't uh, end or he's River doing Dogs. Reservoir Dogs right around now. Rise, right around now, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, this movie, I I would say it's like... I wrote this as my review for the movie. Uh, if Footloose met Dead Poet Society, but if Kevin Bacon straight up sucked and Robin Williams was a wanted murderer. And, and that is this movie. And I was just thinking of another comparison. Mr. Holland's Opus. I've not seen that. Uh, it's another music teacher who teaches kids how to yeah. be good. With how to music. be good. How to be good through music. So he's about a guy teaching people how to be good. Yep, how to be good. So um, I'm very glad you said mentioned Dead Poet Society and Footloose because that's exactly what I wrote. This is if Dead Poet Society because Dead Poet Society takes place in like the tw- I'm a huge fan of the movie. It takes place in the 20s, I want to say, or no, 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 50s. It takes Does place it? in the 50s because you think it's in the 20s because of the private. school. 
of the old architecture private school. They're all in suits. But then you realize they're in a private school yeah, it said that's 19, stuck in the past. Depot size said 1959. So it, Okay. This is set in 1955 in Texas. Yes. Whereas Depot Society, I think, is like New England, Northeastern region, I think. Mm. Um, instead of a private, like, boys' school, like a prestigious private boys' school, this is a death camp. <laughs> <laughs> yes, for, <laughs> this for is young a men. Concentration death camp. Sorry, Holocaust jokes aren't cool. But, like, this is a, like, a, what would you call it? A juvenile work camp? No, because they the, never explain it. So here's how it's explained in the movie. Okay. Is he says, some of these kids are juveniles, delinquents. Some of them are runaways. Some of them, their parents sent them here. But it's a school, but also a, a work with chain fences. Yeah. So it's kind of like a boarding school slash juvie center. Yeah. Uh, it's like my understanding. They never really, they, yeah, exactly. What you just said is how they explain it, which yes. is kind of vague. Yes, which leaves a lot to be desired to figuring out. What? Exactly. Because so there's a house for girls in the same town. But it's in the town. This yes. is on the outskirts of the farm. Yes. Where the girls, which they're chained behind yeah. fences so it's, too. There's a girls and a boys one here, even though the boys one's further out. Yeah. So Both have gated areas, they're, though. And they're called houses for boys and girls. So it's like almost an orphanage slash like... Or kind of? Ju- it doesn't make sense. Never exactly explain what yeah this is. and i know we're jumping ahead but to go back to the dead poet society uh comparison so yeah prestigious northeastern english boarding school for boys this is a texas 1950s juvie orphanage boys school instead of teach instead of a mysterious professor coming in and teaching poetry which teaches the boys how to think for themselves and live it is a music teacher who spoiler alert wanted for murder <laughs> Um, coming in and teaching the boys how to play rock, rock and, roll. and roll, but like more so like blues. He teaches them how to shout blues, rock and roll, yes. like that type of uh fa- foundational era of rock and roll. And, and it makes sense that this role would appeal to Travolta. Uh, yes, obviously, Dead Poets Society worked out really well for Robin Williams. Yes, it Mo- was. I think it was one, probably his first serious acting yeah. career, but before he did Ghoul Hunting. Yeah. Movies of this. Well, I don't think it was his. First, he did good Viet- Good Morning Vietnam prior, I think. That's true, and that that did but, get him um, some accolades. Yeah, he he had been around doing some good stuff. Yeah, but um, this feels very much like Charles is like, I'm gonna get in on this on this thing that's going on on this teacher vibe. Yeah, role. um, and doesn't really work out well for him. I, I don't think he's bad in this movie. I don't. But, he got a Razzie for we're supporting act. Razzie nom. Okay. He got nominated for a Razzie really? for we're supporting nom. I, I think Razzie's just like to yeah. fuck on Travolta. He's fine in this movie. He's fine in this movie. I would even think he might be good in the, He might be the only good performance in this movie. I think he is the best performer in yeah. this movie. By by yeah. by, f- the only one I can see actually doing actually kind of well is Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> <laughs> and her this first appearance, her first cinematic debut. Yeah. Um, and then there's uh, Jamie Walters, who's playing Jesse. Who sucks. He He's sucks. Awful. He's horrible. Heather um, Graham is in this. Yes, the Graham. Assistant. What happened to Heather Graham? Um, she hasn't been around for a little bit. I think. What uh, happened? I don't think anything happened except she, for the Hollywood, uh, you know, patriarchy. Oh yeah. That once a woman she, hits forty. She, yeah, she hit forty. That's sad. But I think Heather Graham yeah. was in some good stuff. Her, she was recently in Norm of the North. Oh. Uh, well, Heather Graham, uh, if you'd like to appear on a John Travolta podcast episode, we'd be happy to have you and talk through your uh, yes. trepidations and trials yeah. working well, on this movie. Because she's coming right off of early successes, uh, her early movies, and then also Twin Peaks right around this time. Can we also talk about how this has a lot of, you know, when I first saw that we're going back to Texas. Yeah. A lot of urban cowboy vibes. We got some urban cowboy vibes. He's an, ur- he's an urban cowboy in this He is movie. an urban cowboy. We also got some urban cowboy vibes in terms of the lessons you're supposed to learn. <laughs> like maybe uh, don't make bets if you can sleep with the yes. warden's daughter. Making bets about rape. Making bets about rape. That's about it. That's it. Yep. Yeah. And this is uh, 1991. Urban Cowboy was 1970. We're, we're making such progress. Yeah, it was like over 12 years yeah. in the future, and we're we're back to rape jokes. Yep. Yay! Very cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah. 
We we already got into this before, but is there any pretense or any? I mean, you've already filled in a lot of the gaps of his career, so I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I pretty much like summarized where we're at. He's yeah. trying to get back into it. This probably understands why it's an appealing role. Yes, it's his first supporting performance we've actually seen since. Um, I think Devil's Reign. Uh, Carrie, Carrie. Carrie. Because I don't think I don't think we've had any really? supporting Travoltas. I mean, he's, he, he would definitely be considered the lead of Look Who's Talking next yeah, to... He's, um, arg- he's Kurt- arguably a lead in this movie, but he gets and billing. I was going to say, he is kind of like... Jesse's the lead. Basement's the sucks. dumb waiter. Um, I'd say he's co-leads in that. Co-lead. Um, Devil's Rain and Carrie, he is... I'm looking through all uh, my supporting. notes. Supporting. Boy in Plastic Bubble, Saturday Night Fever, Grease, yeah. Moment Moment. Yeah, I would, I, he is kind of like... But I would also say it's like a shared lead. Yeah, he. I mean, he's he's the teacher role, so it's the prominent supporting. That's like saying Robin Williams is in the lead role of Dead Poet Society. I mean, like Robin Williams is the lead role. The kid's the lead, though. But Robin, Robin Williams is the most Williams, marketable character. But he's kind. Of, I mean, in terms of measure the screen time. Yes, I'm sure Jamie Walters had more screen time than John Travolta, but yeah. probably not that much. But John Travolta also gets and billing, which is like what solidifies him as supporting in this. And IMDb is billed as number one, though. Yeah, but in the movie, it's and John, all these people, and then and, and John, John Travolta, Travolta as, as Cabe. 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 It's Cabe, with Cabe. Jack Cabe. Jack Cabe. Name's a name Cabe. that's Jack totally Cabe. normal. Jack Cabe. Jack Cabe. Jack Cabe. <laughs> Jack Cabe. Um, I murdered a Frenchman and moved to Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So should we just like dive right into the plot, man? Oh, I mean, okay. I gotta, you know, we gotta talk about how this movie came to be. Which there's a very little evidence of online. Yeah. Um, what production company made this? I Who? don't know. It, it was Univer. It's a Universal movie. That's right. But um, distributed by Universal. Yeah. But it's directed by Jeff Hornaday, um, who is a choreographer. Does a lot of dance choreography. I looked him up. Did he do anything besides this? I mean, he did he stuff, did. but it's like this is probably if you consider big movies, like if this is well, a big. He did movie. something that's bigger. It just didn't release in theaters. But um, what was it? Well, first he was a choreographer. He choreographed a lot of live events, a lot of music videos, yeah. whatnot. Directed some random stuff. He's directed world tours for Madonna and Paul McCartney. Mm. He also directed events for Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. Fascinating. Um, but you know, he's just he was a, like a huge choreographer in Hollywood. Just did a lot of things. Yeah. This is he maybe worked with Travolta, and that kind of led to this working. I'm not sure about that. Mm-hmm. But uh, this was his first chance to direct a full movie. He would do it about music, obviously, because he is a choreographer. Yeah, but there isn't really much dancing in this. <laughs> not much. There's a little, but not much. But um, he would later go on to direct the Teen Beach Movie movies for Disney. Um, one of them he won Best Choreography for. For what award show? Um, Kids' Choice? No, it wasn't Kids' It was something that was actually real. Like, I was genuinely surprised to see it. Hmm. Yeah, he won. Oh, it was the. Oh, never mind. I lied. It was the MTV Music Video Award oh, for well, Best Choreography. Well, fuck that. We don't care about MTV Music Awards. Um, no, he he won. Um, he won. He was nominated for Directors Guild of America for Best Director for a thing called Geek Charming, which is um, a movie he directed in 2011 hmm. for Disney Channel. Interesting. Interesting indeed. But yeah, he, this is pretty much his like only theatrical major release in that sense yeah it's a teen beach movie is probably bigger just this teen beach movie <laughs> i've not seen teen beach movie neither I, have i maybe we'll do the teen beach movie cat no the teen beach podcast one day no um, we won't maybe we'll <laughs> um but here's a fun fact about it. the cinematographer for this robert brinkman he was a uh, 28 years old 28 he was, he was the, the, at the time the youngest person to shoot a major hollywood studio film which right from the indu trivia section yeah um ripped from the headlines well and i i that's a little bit surprising, but also not. I mean, like, considering there's probably a lot of DPs I mean, around that age. This movie is actually pretty well shot, which is the surprising part. It is pretty well this shot. This movie's pretty well shot. There's I was a lot very of, surprised. There's a lot of beautiful shots in this. And you, yeah. d- uh, one, I did write this down. The number of scenes set at sunset. Yes. Because we're both assistant directors, and we know, like, the complication, the complicated factor of shooting a lot of sunset scenes. Well, you know, this was actually the first production to use the volume from The Mandalorian. Uh, so everything was get just the, filmed with the screen. Get, get the <laughs> so fuck out of here. Not... I don't even think that technology existed or was it, thought of yet, not. man. Um, but yeah, um, I guess that leads us right into the start of the movie because this starts with a very nice sunset shot. Yes. Uh, well, sunrise. Sunrise. Some morning, yeah. And we're getting 
establishing shots showing that, that we're in the middle this of nowhere town, like in, in middle, Texas. Yes. It's like field Texas, not desert Texas. It's Yeah, it's field uh, prairie tex- yes. Texas, not not desert Texas. It's honest to God prairie. It feels like a little house on the prairie, same design. I, I if, the, if I didn't hear, knew, know that this was in Texas, I would have thought this was like Nebraska yeah, or said Nebraska, Iowa. Kansas or something. Yeah, yeah. This does, I mean, I haven't been to Texas, so I don't know all the diverse in environments mm. but i imagine there are prairie sections but it's just yeah. when you think of texas you think of like a skull on the side of a <laughs> dirt road in the desert like you know like that's kind of what i get when i think of texas but yeah it's probably north texas which i would assume is more prairie like I, do you want to go on a road trip to texas jeff maybe one day let's, let's do it tomorrow okay, okay. austin here we, come. here we come um no but um yeah it starts with some really nice looking establishing shots actually think yep. it's very beautiful yeah very uh, pretty. This guy knows how to, you know, use the camera settings, which I suppose is like the basics of being a the camera settings. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's not just it shot. shot on film. Yeah, shot on film. I, what am I talking about? I'm dumb. Never mind. I don't know where I was going with that. But uh, yeah, we're establishing <laughs> shots of this town. Uh, um, and then you wait, just start it was hearing, shot in California, though. Yeah, very universal, funny. extremely funny. Yeah. <laughs> but you yeah. start hearing uh, the bells. Yeah, the church bells. And here's someone yelling, get up. Get up. Is it get, get up? up? Is that what he's yelling? Well, is that what he's shouting? Wake, wake up. Wake or up. Get up. Get up. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, what in tarnation? And all these people in town are walking down. They're like, what is going on over at the church? Well, the first thing I thought was like, is this how they normally get up? And then yeah. you see people like opening their windows and looking outside confused. Yeah. It's a very small town, like yes. one block. Yes. And that's the town. I don't even think there's a stoplight. It's, it is certainly looks like back a lot studio. Yes. hundred um, percent. Back like lot one studio. block with a curved road. So you can't see past. Uh, exactly. The they don't face any other opposite directions. Yes. So, um, yeah, I wrote down Jamie Walters ring bell being a hooligan. Yes. It's this hooligan Jesse on top of the church ringing the bell. What a great character Go! intro. And then and the uh, police show up and they're like, get down. He's get like, the- make me. And then he, throws beer bottles at the police yeah, and, and then, then they run into the church and, and then they arrest him we cut to him in the back of a police car going down the road title sequence yeah. shout shout why is this movie called shout because he shouts but this, is there this movie's about rocks so i guess it's like you know you make me want to shout that even though that song does not appear in this movie I am very confused. Like, why wasn't it called? There's so many other titles this could have like made more sense. It's, it's all about shouting. What? What? There was like a IMDb. There's a fantastic, uh, uh, like tagline to it where it's like two souls, one voice, or something <laughs> like that. Hold on, let me see. Two hearts, one beat. Yes. I'm looking. I'm showing Jeff the poster now. Oh uh, yeah, I can see it right here. Two with hearts. Heather Graham and uh, Jesse kissing as they dance within the silhouette of John Travolta. Yes, uh, two hearts, one beat. Yes, Ex- very weird poster. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing too. Is like this is very much at least I don't know how this was marketed and I watched a trailer for it, but at least in the poster alone, it seems very rom commy. But when you watch the movie, like the rom coms, definitely the yeah, there's, side. There's really not that much romance going on here. Not it's, much. It's present. It is there. Um. But there's a lot more random business going on. That's and that's like ninety percent of the movie is random business, yes. and then the ten percent is the romance. Yeah. But yeah, but they get they get back to the boys. The he's pops. also not cu- cuffed in the car. Yeah, he's not cuffed, and he threw beer bottles at and them. And he's being a hooligan. Yeah, <laughs> and they get him to uh, they get him back to the boys' home, the, the boys Benedict home. boys' home. Yeah, um, and Mister Benedict comes out and he offers you know Jesse punishment. He's like. You'll have a night in the stockade or whatever the hell he says. So, And the kid says, make a two and you got a deal. Uh, yeah, he's a hooligan. But he, to back up real quick, um, I didn't know going into this that it was set in Texas in 1955. What gave it away was there's like panning shots of the town as he's ringing the bell. And in one shot, you can see a drinking fountain that says whites only. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait a second. What was this taking place? And then mm-hmm. I Googled it. It's like 1955 Texas. Yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. Racism, segregation. Yeah. and Something so, that this movie it decides, does, hey, what if we just didn't? <laughs> I, it doesn't really yeah there's there's no i mean it 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 states that it's there yes th- but this, it doesn't do anything with it this movie is about john travolta saving uh 
rock and roll and blues. And does that remind you of any contemporary musical film that came nope, out recently, John? not at all. Not a single movie. Not a single John one. John Travolta saves rock and roll, and he tells them, hey, those blacks had a good idea. And that is almost verbatim what he says at the end of this movie. Yep. Great. Yeah. Very happy. We're going to talk about the bar scene, which I'm also kind of like, yes. uh, maybe a little sh- shudder a little bit. Yes. So... Uh, yeah, uh, racism, segregation, that's all here in this movie. Yes. Um, and so but off to the side, because we, we have to deal with the white people. We have to deal are, with the white people. Who are being oppressed for liking rock and roll. There are no leader supporting black actors in this yes. movie. It's all white people. Yes. So, brought to you by a podcast full of white dudes. Yeah. At the end, I'll, we'll get to the end. We'll get to the end. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, you know, they're, they're at the, the boys' home. Yeah, I wrote and, down that he, Jamie is the, or Jesse is the James Dean rebel type. Yeah, they're doing everything to make him, he looks like James Dean, they did his hair like James Dean, he's dressed yeah. like James Dean. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have any of the charisma. <laughs> no, he does not. Um, ability of James Dean. You're telling me about it, sir. That's Marlon Brando, what the hell are you talking about? N- no, that's James oh. Dean. Am, am I? That's James. I'm, th- I'm thinking of Stella, I'm thinking of Stella. Yeah, you're thinking of Stella. And you're tearing me apart, Lisa. James Dean. Tommy Wiseau. Who was, who was impersonating Ugh, James whatever. Dean. Um, the fuck, man? <laughs> it's Tommy Wiseau. Okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> it's at this point that he's working in the fields with the boys. And this is also kind of an ensemble cast, too. What are you are you looking it up like you're tearing me apart, Lisa? No, I'm not. What are you, Jeff? For the folks in the audience, Jeff is Googling your tear, like your... You're tearing me apart, Lisa James Dean. And he looked up a Cora article that says, why is the line you're tearing me? Oh, he, he, he left Stop. it. I'm going to be narrating everything you're doing. Okay, so in Rebel Without a Cause, yeah, he yells, you're tearing me apart. He does not say you're tearing me apart, Lisa. Lisa is added for Lisa's added room. with Tommy Wiseau, yes. yeah. yeah. Anyway. Anyway. So this guy straight up sucks. The actor <laughs> and the character both suck in this movie. Would you say he... Is he better or worse than tommy wizzo's james dean impression um a little better than that um really not much not much um but he sucks it was at this point where i just wrote is this just footloose <laughs> because <laughs> <laughs> this this place is like you're not allowed to listen to music no rock and roll yeah and then who saunters into town heather graham oh yeah she just well she does show up first heather graham heather mr graham. benedict's daughter Yep, she's uh, back from college. She's back from college, and all the guys are like, "Is that, Ooh, is that yeah. Sally?" Oh man, she they're, grew they're up. They're like, "That's not Sally. She got bigger. She got bigger." And uh, Sarah, not Sally. My bad. Sarah. Um, and one of them's like, "Yeah, she has tits now," and it's like, yeah. "Oh my god, oh, yeah." Guys. We're, we're we're in the nineties, everybody. Um, um, do we know anything about Sarah? What she's studying? What she wants to no, be? Never, what her aspirations are? Nope. She just she is present. Falls in love with a guy. Yes, that's it. Um, but she's there female characters uh but she shows up and uh cut to mr benedict is like jesse carry her bags up and then he like keeps banging her bags she's like they're fragile and he just bangs them more is that his name mr benedict yes in my notes i wrote him down as warden (laughs) it's it's benedict's voice he's the warden (laughs) but he's 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 a crazy guy Um, he is a he's a weird guy but jesse keeps dropping the stuff and then mr benedict makes him like do exercises and stuff to as punishment and later has him dig a hole yeah but um cut to cut to someone uh, actually sauntering into town johnny John, t i don't think he's sauntering into town he's sauntering into town it cuts to a bar well he just sauntered into town he just meets everyone there he's coming for the job i thought like we cut to the bar and we see somebody taking a drink and putting it down and the camera tilts up and there's john Travolta oh, yeah, sitting at a bar that, that is it but it's, but it's established he's new to town yes he is new to town he sauntered into town and then i'm um, already being contentious today i'm just i wrote down four pages of notes yeah. see we're going to talk about another movie in the next episode that I, you'll you'll correct me a lot but yeah. i wrote down a lot of notes on this one yeah I love you, Jeff. Love you, too. All right. So anyway, um, he's smoking and drinking. Another film where John Travolta's smoking. He smokes a lot. Yes, he does. Yeah. I'm concerned about his health. <laughs> he's alive. He's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Scientology. Oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so. <Ooh>. That, <laughs> um, but yeah, he's there. Um, and he walks over to the jukebox and puts rock and roll music on. Yeah. And everyone in the bar is like, what is this rat trap music? Well, th- there's there's some there's some more colorful words there. And I think then uh 
Linda Florentino, who yes. plays Molly in this movie, who I thought I was going to love her character, and then she just disappears yeah, the whole she fucking movie. She literally has like no lines for the rest of the movie. Yeah, she she's a she appears here. She is like a love interest in like the first act, and yeah. she has one scene in the second act, and then she's just gone. Yeah, she does not appear for the rest of the she's, movie. She's gone. So, but we see this Molly girl woman um who puts on a song and she dances with travolta and they're dancing well, travolta puts the song on i and thought then she dances with him oh you're right you're right you're right you're right because he it, puts but the it's song established on. that she put the record yes into yes the yes bar yes. player you're right yeah because she's rebelling against the town as well yeah so he he dances with her and then they unplug the jukebox the sheriff does the sheriff Tra- sheriff travis who quote says it's inward music yes. and so it's like oh we got more racism yes. in here and Charles is like, it's just good music. I'm trying to appreciate it. And he almost gets into a fight with this guy. And yeah. And he flashes his badge. Won't be the first. Yes. John Travolta uh, fighting the Thor. And Linda Fiorentino, Molly, convinces him to leave yeah. before fighting. Yep. Uh, and Charles is like, I'm here for a job and all that. And she's like, hey, come to this bar I work at. Yeah. We play this kind of music. Yeah. And he's like, how'd that music get in the jukebox? And she's like, I put it there. Yeah. Because, um, so, you know, fuck racism. Yeah. So Travolta heads to the boys, Benedict boys' home. Yes. And he has an interview with Mr. Benedict. Yeah. So he's trying to become the new music teacher. Yeah. Because every year the boys play the 4th, at of, the July 4th of July concert. party in town. Yeah. Uh, and Travolta needs to get them into 4th of July shape. Yeah. Play their music. Very boring music. Yes. Very you know, boring. You're very like white Amer- music. Yes. Yeah, so you're very like American. Like. Yeah. So um, he takes a job and he's like, well, so these boys, like, you know, they're that's when yeah. he gives the line. They're juveniles, they're delinquents, they're like, orphans. This place? <laughs> yeah, and and also they're they're sitting in his office and he looks outside and they're doing like exercises. Yeah, they're mo- well, they're mooning Mr. Benedict, but then when Mr. Benedict turns around, they've transitioned to push-ups. Yeah, but Travolta thinks it's funny that they're mooning him. Yeah. So um, he's like, oh, yeah, Mr. Benedict, I believe in hard work, and I'm going to make him work hard to for this 4th of July concert. Yeah. Um, and then they go to church. They go to church. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow's there. No lines. No lines. Um, but one of the other guys um, is very interested in her, but is too afraid to say anything. Yeah, I wrote down love interest. Yes. There's, um, it's like this other thing, too, is like this is technically an ensemble movie. Yes. That is very weak on its ensemble. Mm. I, I wrote down the names of some. Like, I got Bradley's name. That's mm-hmm. the guy who, spoiler alert, later in the movie, tells... Um, He's the one who tells Sarah about the bet. Mm-hmm. There's a younger kid who's, like, 12 or 13, maybe. Yeah. I don't know his name. Then there's the guy with the black hair. That's the guy who falls in love with Gwyneth Paltrow. Mm-hmm. I don't know his name. Yeah. He's, he has black hair. But, like, it, you know what I mean? Like, there's, like, an ensemble. Yeah, there's like, a lot of... Like it's, guys, and we're supposed to care about them, but we don't get anything of their character, nor it, do we ever get their names. It's the Dead Poet Society, like ensemble gang, too. Only you know, we actually cared about those yeah. boys because they each have their own little storyline threads yeah. and growth. And all the storylines for the guys not... in this are just girls they want to sleep with, like, yep. not even yep, they want to get out of here or do anything with their they lives. They don't have any aspirations for it's their that dreams. they like rock and roll and they want to sleep with various women at the uh, the girls' home. Yep. And that is a, that's most of the motivation of this movie. Yeah, it is. But um, so that's that's when I actually looked up how much did this movie make? Not much. How much? We'll, we'll get to it. We'll oh, get we'll to get it. to it at the that's, end. That's okay. our ending thing. Okay. Um, so then we go to the first music class scene. Yes, and the they do not do well. No, they suck. Yes, and Trol- they... Trolt is like trying to use like fun ways to get them invested in the music. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not necessarily working. Right um he's like one of them hey play without the music yeah this is a threat and this kid's like i can't do it without the music and, and, and this gets like, repeated like it's yeah. supposed to be important and it's never is. is there a payoff at the end of that i don't think there was there kind of is with the chicken walk thing but but not the fourth of july concert one yeah no we don't get because that's end. supposed to be the ultimate payoff yeah, for everybody but we don't get it at the end and it's only one guy it's yeah. the pianist he doesn't do, do a thing with a guitarist he doesn't do a thing with a drummer yeah. it's just the pianist yeah. and it's so small Mm-hmm. That it comes back, but at least everyone's playing except for Jesse. And Troll's like, Jesse doesn't want to play. play. And Jesse's like, I don't think I will. No. And Troll like gets snippy with him. And then Mr. Benedict's like, I got some work for you, boy. He's like, I'll, I'll take care of him. And he makes Jesse come out and dig a ditch. Yeah. To be buried in. Right. Um, World War Two style. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Jesse won't play. He digs a hole instead. And then this is when Sarah Heather Graham starts walking by, mm-hmm. and then he gets. Then it's like. 
playful music starts yeah. playing and he tosses it. This is like the urban cowboy when John Travolta tries to kidnap, <laughs> uh, what was, uh, Nancy, Nancy Allen? N- yeah, Nancy Allen. I, I, Wait, no, no. She's not an urban cowboy. Urban cowboy is, um, I'm what's her name for terms of Deborah Winger. Deborah Winger. Deborah Winger. This is like an urban cowboy when he tries to kidnap Deborah Winger, yeah. and it's actually a horrifying scene. <laughs> but they put banjo music yeah. over it to yeah. make it happy. Like he's like Throwing mocking dirt and her. taunting her, and like making fun of her, and it's yeah. like little playful flirty yeah. music. Like but you he's know, like how, tossing dirt. At how her. boys <laughs> flirt with girls, yeah. you know? It's so cute. I got in a relationship because I just grabbed dirt and started throwing it at people. That's what I do to girls at bars. Yeah. I just throw dirt and be like, "Love me," and they're like, yes. "Okay." And our hands are yeah. reasonable. It's at that uh, point when they're fighting and all this stuff. I just wrote down in quotes, "They're gonna fuck." Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, but um. They're they're very contentious with each other. She likes riding horses, and the ditch he's digging is actually for the horses. It's like a latrine pit, and whatnot. Yeah. Um. So he she, goes back to digging. Yes. Jack Cabe, John Travolta comes yes. out, and he's playing his harmonica. Yes. And he starts singing Aaron's a little like, bit. Oh, harmonica. And I actually like this so- scene yeah. because it's like John Travolta's like you know he's he's doing a good performance in my mm-hmm. opinion here. He's like playing the little. You dug your you dug your own hole, man. Yeah. Like you know, like you wa- wanted this. Yeah, and he's like, like Dick, and Charles is like, you did it yourself. Yep, you did it to yourself. And then that night, Charles is back in his cabin, and he puts on a record of rock and roll music. He plays it really loud, and all the boys are like, "What is this? What? Yeah. They're like, we gotta hear more of this. Yeah, give us more." So they show up at his door. Yeah, and they're like, "Can you show us that?" And he's like, "No, Mister Bendick won't appreciate it." By the way, that entire scene that we're talking about. All takes place at sunset. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. It, shot, look, it looks really nice. It's shot beautifully. I gave this movie an extra half star because it just, it just looks, looks nice. It looks yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Really good. Uh, what was the guy's name? The DP? Um, ooh, let me look. Because I don't think he went on to do much after this. Let me check. Let me check. His name is Robert Brinkman. He would go on to shoot The Truth About Cats and Dogs, The Cable Guy. So not much. Yeah. Tenacious D. That's a bit sad. Yeah, you know, he, he's consistently working. He works on stuff every year. But not, like, big stuff. I'm just, That guy deserved, like, after this movie, he deserved, like, to get, like, a bit mm. nice bigger role, and then a bigger one, and then a bigger film, bigger film. Chef Beverly Hills Chihuahua, too. <sighs> What's his name again? Uh, Robert Brinkman. Robert Brinkman. Um, I want to hire you to shoot a film for me, man. <laughs> um, because I think um, you showed a lot of great talent. I mean, he's, he was 28 in 1991. How old would that make him now? Um, Thir- 48. I'm on his IMDb. He's he was born in 1961, so he would be like almost he'd be 60 this year. Wait, then no, wait. He said he was 28 years old when he did uh, Shout. Yeah, so he's born in 1961. Yeah, 28 plus 61 is 1989. And that's when they shot this movie. Uh, yeah, but wait, it's only has it, it's been 30 years. <gasps> Fuck! It's been thirty years since nineteen ninety one. Yep, I literally did twenty because you know. Yep. <laughs> yes, but anyway, I'm dirty thirty in four years. Yeah. You're like Stuart. Oh my god! Oh my god! Stuart is aging like the guy at the end of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade right now. His I, hair I, is stretching literally, out. His skin is caving in. Have you seen Santa Claus with Tim Allen? Yes. When the beard grows back yeah. after he shaves it. That's what's happening to me right now. Yeah. <sighs> but no, Stuart's still alive for now. He's 60 years old. Yeah. God damn. He's almost alive. He's still alive for now. For now? now. Jesus, fuck, man. <laughs> what do you know? So anyway, that entire scene where John Travolta yeah. plays music... All in sunset, yes. shot beautifully. But he makes a deal with the kids. Yeah, when they come to his cabin thing, mm-hmm. it's that he will, if they work hard on the Fourth of July Fourth music, July stuff. he will show them some rock and roll stuff. Yeah. The next day, we're in the class. Kids are doing better. Oh, we know they sound worse. They sound worse. Yeah, they are worse. That's it. Yeah, because they're really interested in the rock and roll, and he's like, "No, I told you we made a deal." And then one of them starts like playing the saxophone. He's like. And he goes over and he shows the kid how to do rock saxophone. He goes and around. Then he did. He has the guitarist and yeah. then the piano. And then this is what I wrote down. It's like they begin playing blues and rock and roll, yeah. and they're good at it right away. Yes, immediately. And it's like fuck you. They're immediately good fuck at it. Fuck you. 
to think that these boys are just going to pick up fucking yeah. blues rock and roll and just start nailing yeah. it and right they're all away. Like, wow, what was that? That was great. And he's like, it's rock. It's called, it's called rock it's and called roll. It's called rock and roll, boys. You know, it's coming. It's coming in from the south. And he's like, it's going to burn through this country like a prairie fire. That's when I wrote down a Texan dead poet society, but music instead of poetry. Yes. That, that scene really solidified it for me. Yes. And he's like, this is... You but it, burn through the country. You gotta admit, it's a little insulting to like the found the found the cultural foundation of blues, rock and roll. Yeah. That the bunch of group of white boys would just like start playing it and be good yes. right away. This movie has a lot of. That. I watched that and I'm like, that I would not appreciate that. This this movie has a lot of that. <laughs> like it'd be one thing if he was like, okay, like Jeremy, I want you to do a dun 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 mm. dun dun, and he's like, okay, you do that, then you play yeah. a dun dun dun, and he, like if he did that, but no, they just start freestyle jamming. <laughs> And they're like so cohesive as a group yeah. right away. Nah, not for yeah. me. Not for me. Absolutely not. But then um There's a dining hall scene after the that. Dining hall scene. This is where Sarah walks through. This is where. And Jesse and the boys yeah. are all sitting at a table. They see her. And they're like, Oh, I want to nail her and all that kind of stuff. And then Jesse turns to them and he's like, I'll take a bet. I'll nail her first. And, and it's like, like, How much you betting? Twenty bucks or two dollars? Yeah, and they, you and, they, got $2. and they make a bet he will nail her and then there's one guy bradley yeah, who's like my maybe boy. this is a bad idea <laughs> he's like hey guys i don't think you should he make bets on like the raping baseline women. level of common decency yes just like, be like hmm, maybe we shouldn't take bets on raping it's people. like yeah guys i don't think we should be doing it's like you're a chicken blah, 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 yeah, they start doing, and you start fucking <laughs> making make fun, of him. fun of him and it's just like uh, the kids in this are awful yeah they're pretty bad mm. so then he they're in the stable I think, or in the farm well, stable. Yeah. Cuts to that next after this. Mm-hmm. And then she's walking by with her horse and then Jesse all the, like... All the guys do like the Disney Channel thing where they're like lean out from behind a wall with their heads stacked on top of each other. Yeah. And Jesse gives them a look like, hey, yeah. watch this. Yeah. Walks over to her and be like, hey, Jesse, or Sarah, I just wanted to apologize for earlier. And yeah. then as he's talking, he steps into horse shit. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty poetic because everything he's saying to her is yeah. horse shit. Um, and then she looks at him and she's like, oops, and then just walks yeah. by. She's not interested, rightfully so. Not interested. Um, but he's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So then it's back at the house at night. Yes. He walks in. Like, first off, can we just talk about Mr. Benedict's apparently uh, open door policy <laughs> in his house? Yeah. Because Jesse just in. walks in, no issues. So uh, she's in his office mm-hmm. typing something, a letter to him, I think. Yeah. And he like walks in. He's like, "You're not supposed to be here." And he's like, "Oh, do you want me to leave?" It's like, "You can do whatever you want." Mm. And that's when he like gets really close to her yeah. again, like uncomfortably, uninvitingly yeah. close. He makes his intentions fairly known. Yeah, fairly known. And that's when there's a little exposition. That he has like there's like a photo of his parents or whatever. Yeah. It's like, "Where are your parents now?" Yeah, it's he's like, like they're oh, all dead. He's like, "Yeah, I don't know where they what they were. Where they had all I have is this picture." Yeah, she's like, dead. "I'll look for." more pictures and stuff for you yeah and she is like my mom died when i was eight so they have a yeah. connecting thing with dead parents yeah nothing more, like less like dead poet society more like a dead parent society oh uh, stop <sighs> the dead parent society am i right am i right so there's another ma- music class scene after this <laughs> um where jack uh does the whole sheet music thing yeah. again and the kid's with- like i can't play without my sheet music and he's like i want to see you after class yeah so okay. this is reflective of the Todd Anderson scene in Dead Poet Society yeah. when he tries to read poetry, but it's really bad, and yeah. the boys make fun of him. So he says, close your eyes, and he spins them in yeah. circles, and he starts m- going off on like yeah. other like random things, and he makes up poetry on the spot, and then Ron yeah. Williams is like, remember this. Beautiful mm-hmm. scene in Dead Poet Society, right? Yeah. And so- How is that the, translated the, in this the movie? The bastardization of that scene <laughs> happens. <laughs> Where Travolta, <laughs> Travolta takes this kid out into the field. And he says, I want you to and walk. Then he, and he puts him down on the other side. <laughs> he says, uh, I want you to go from there to me without yes. walking he's or like, running. You can't run or walk. You have to, but you have to get like 10 feet across to me. And he's like, and the how, like I... how do I do it? And Charles like, figure it out. And so it starts like chicken walking. He's like, chicken walking. Burk, 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 and he like chicken walks over. He's like, and I'm like, that's still walking. I don't see why that's different. And then he says, now like act like a monkey. And yeah, they like, start ooh, walking around. Ooh, 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 ooh. And just doing monkey walks. And Jesse's watching them. And Jesse's this. like, this is fun. This and Mr. Bennett's like, what the hell is going on out there? And how is this any in any way related to piano playing, you might ask? It's not. It's not. But seemingly it helps him. But seemingly but we never, it we helps We never see him. the payoff so because we never see him playing without the music. Fuck that scene for the bastardization of yeah. that amazing Dead Poet Society scene. Yeah, like it. it I, I just wrote Travolta doing the chicken, LOL. 
Yeah. Like, if the scene had a point, if it had paid off later, maybe there could have been... Like, it wasn't necessarily an awful scene in concept. Just it doesn't have any point. It's just watching them do that. So, um... Yeah, next... They're back in the cafeteria after this. Oh, wait a second. There's a, a bit where... He's teaching them blues music in that music class. The warden like peers in, like yeah. sees them. It's and he's not happy. About he's it. not happy about it. And then the boys are like, "We want to listen to more of that music." And so Jack tells them the story of a famous DJ. Where they're the like, what's a, "What's a DJ?" Yeah. <laughs> and then the little boys like, "You don't know what a DJ is? Tell him, Jack. Like, oh, yeah. you know what a DJ? You fucking tell yeah. him. It's a disc. He tells him it's a disc, disc jockey. jockey. It's this guy named the Midnight Rider. Midnight Rider. So then, um. Bradley sneaks into... Um, well, Mr. He, he tells them they need a radio to listen to the Midnight Rider. Yeah, so they steal uh, a transmitter, whatever, from an antique radio yeah. from Mr. Benedict's home, then they plug it in. He's a, he, Midnight Rider's like a Wolfman Jack type. Yeah. Where like there's a legend that he's like an illegal broadcaster. And yeah. Like, he travels around the country evading, as Travolta says, the police, the military, even President Eyzenhower. Um, can, can you imagine so, we're in 1955? Yeah, so it's like the the Wolfman Jack thing, specifically in American Graffiti, where he's like just in a local radio station. Yeah. That's pretty much the same bit here. Yeah. But, you know, print the legend is right. the idea. Uh, so they break into the house to get a transistor or something for the radio. Yeah. Like a transmitter. Uh, Sarah walks in and sees Bradley, like, stealing yeah. uh, the transistor thing. She's like, what you get? What you doing here? Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, it's just a, it's a little project. We're just building yeah. something. Yeah. And that's fine. And, and that's it. She lets him leave with it. Why is she in this movie? <laughs> um, for this next scene in the cafeteria where she and Jesse are starting to hit it off a little bit. And she says a sequence of words that I would consider perhaps the least subtle uh, sexual innuendo in a movie ever done. Um, where she's like she's like, Can you show me how to use can you show me how to use that thing? She's the like, guitar. Well, no, not yet. That's not specific. It just it starts off with her saying it's going to be a long, hot summer, a hot, long, wet summer. Uh, and she's like, "Can you show me how to use the thing? Do you usually let other people touch it? Has anyone else ever touched it before?" And just is like, "Well, I don't know about that guy." <laughs> and then he's like, "You mean the guitar, right?" And she's like, "What else would I be talking about?" Mm-hmm. It's like the scene where it's very clear that it's all mm-hmm. written about a dick. Yes, but uh, he's but it's about the guitar because yeah. she wants to learn guitar from him, who's learning it from Travolta. Yeah, um, but they do they do get the radio working. Yeah, and they listen to the Midnight Rider later after yeah. that scene. Um, actually, wait, something happens first. Something happens first. Bradley feels bad, so he goes and he tells Sarah. He tells Sarah about the bet immediately after the long wet summer thing. Yeah, he's like, yeah, there's a bet, and Sarah comes in, slaps Jesse, and is like, we're done. Yeah. I can't believe you pig, all that stuff. Yeah. How dare you yeah. make bets on my body? Yes. And she's like, oh, it's understandable. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> Frankly. It's like, how absurd of you, woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to think that this is and wrong. And she's like, I changed. I really do care about you. And she's like, yeah, that doesn't change the fact that you did it. But um, oh, that, young night, love. that night, you know, they're all sad, or he's sad now. And they listen to the Midnight Rider. And he says, I'm going to play some music for you, for the audiences. And he plays music. He plays a song from 1987, which is the very weird part. What? Yes. I did not re- no, remember it, this. It's a rock song from 1987. Jesus Christ. Um, which makes no sense in the context of this movie. No. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of a continuity error. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. Um, but that inspires Jesse to burst in the house and kiss Sarah. Oh, yeah. Yes. He just like... Really does just like again, Mr. Yeah. Benedict's and he's open like, door he's policy. Like, I'm gonna win her back because of this song. This, this song will change your life. Um. <laughs> would you say? Th- would you say this song is so wet? Jeff? It's a long, hot American summer. Long, hot American wet summer. Yes. Um, but yeah, he runs and kisses her, and then runs back out. That's it. They just kiss. It's literally, they kiss, and then he runs away. Yep. And I wrote. I know that's just a boring. <laughs> <laughs> But they keep listening to the uh, to the music. They keep um, Mr. Bendix says they can't play blues in class anymore. Yeah. Uh, so they have to stick with like the boring Fourth uh, of July music, which Travolta is. But he's like, you know, kids keep practicing their free time. Yeah. So they go underneath the barn and practice rock by themselves. Oh, that's that's later, right? No, that's right now. I think. 
Okay, but there's a scene where they're practicing under the bar, under the farm later. Yeah. Okay. This so is when this, Mr. This Benedict is comes in. Oh, no, that's later, I think. Is it? They what go to next? a rock and roll club. Oh, I didn't even write any notes about the rock and roll club. Yeah. I forgot about that. So, okay, after he goes to Sarah's house and kisses her, um, he leaves the house. But they also leave the compound with the boys. Yes. So they all leave. The, the boys decide to go out and have a night on the town, figure out what the vibe of this rock and roll music is. Yeah. They, they follow Cabe uh, to Rolta. And they go to this club. Yes. It's a rock and roll club. Yeah, rock and roll club, a hidden club. Uh, and it's... So it's a mixed club, so yes. it's not a segregated club. Mm-hmm. Um, there's blacks and white people there yes. and all that stuff. So um, so they go in. And there's two black musicians performing. Very much immediately, they're like fish out of water types yeah. is kind of what their vibe they're trying to get yeah. up with those boys. Um, but yeah, they have musicians up there, but he's dancing. It's a fun time. Travolta's is dancing with Linda Fiorentino, and then he sees the boys come in. And he's just like, what are you guys doing here? You shouldn't be here. And they're like, we want to see this music. And he's like, all right, just hang out. And there's a, not to mention that among the boys is the 13-year-old kid. Yes. He just walks in. This is very clear, like a nightclub. Um, <laughs> it also, like, historically speaking, the age of drinking 21 was made in the 30s. Yeah. So why is this yeah. kid in here? But he, whatever. Yeah. But Charles is like, just keep a low profile. And then we cut to Jesse up on the stage playing with the musicians. Yeah. And mind you, like he's up there playing with the musicians, and then some of the other boys come up. Yeah. Then Jack comes up and starts playing yeah. harmonica, and eventually, like, this is a, this is something that kind of bugged me a little bit yeah. is that you know this is a place that where like black musicians are free and able to play, yeah. and then a bunch of white dudes come yeah, up and start come up staging and... them. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Ugh. this movie has no understanding <sighs> of what it's trying to do, because yeah. it's trying in parts to be a movie recognizing. The contribution to black culture to rock music, but it decides the way to do that is by a bunch of white people being like, "Yeah, this is good." Yeah, actually. and putting no recognition and no like informative process yeah. on the history of it. Yeah, like it's all just like, "Hey, there's this thing called rock and roll music. Yeah. We're not going to tell you who made it up in the first place, mm-hmm. and we're not going to tell you like the ramifications of the people who made it up. Mm-hmm. We're just going to say it's good music, and we're going to play it. And that's it." And so they leave the club. Um. And this is when the sheriff comes back, yes? Um, okay, so as they're leaving the club, yes, yeah. the sheriff shows up. And, he, and he's like, he, Yo, what, are you, y'all, what are y'all doing here? Well, yeah, because then this is when Jack, Jesse, and Molly are outside. Yeah. And the sheriff shows up, and the sheriff's drunk. Yes. And he tries he, to pick a fight with Jack. He tries to pick a fight with Jack. And he succeeds at it. A little bit of a brawl goes down. Jesse has his back. And then John Travolta starts like... He just wails he on the sheriff. He wails at the sheriff. Like, and Molly's like, get off. He's the sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> he just starts wailing at him like Luke this Skywalker like wails on Darth nose, Vader. bloody nose, like broken nose, all that. Yeah. Apparently. And then they pull Travolta off, and he runs back to the school with the kids. No ramifications. No, there's ramifications. Oh, there are ramifications. There are ramifications. Like, there's, there's a pretty oh, big ramification. There's a at pretty, the end. pretty big fucking um, ramification. But back at the school, this is when the kids are practicing under the barn because oh, they felt oh, what? Wait what? a minute, you forgot. There's a par- so Jesse and Jack both go back to the school. Yes, and it's like it's. Oh yeah, Jesse says he's gonna run away. He's gonna run away, and then Jack tells him, "I don't think you should." Yeah, you need to fight the system from inside. You can't fight it from the outside. Very confusing messages here because, yes, he tells him that, but then he says, but if you're going to run away, here's my harmonica. You can always give me yeah. a call or whatever. I'm always here to help He's you like, out. He's like, you need to change the system from within. And so then Jesse's like on the verge of running away, and then he decides not to. And yeah, he goes he back into the camp. He's like, we're going to make our own rock group here. Wouldn't be the first time yes. either in the movie, which, again, goes to the confusing message of the story of yes. like convincing kids who are in bad circumstances to stay in those circumstances and just kind of write it out yeah, and, and fight the power instead of running away from it. But fight the power would also be like running away from the power. Cause the power would be wanting to keep you there. Yes. Again, it's just very the, confusing. Yeah. This movie's me. about like making liberation from within, like they break out of the prison camp essentially. Except they, they don't. Well, they break it from within. at the end. They, at the end, it's like a metaphorical breakout. Yeah. Anyway, they're practicing under the barn. I can finally do this scene I thought was happening like seven times. Um, yes. They're... they're practicing rock and roll under the barn. Ooh, wait a second. We oh, forgot my God. <laughs> what? what? Uh, okay. So after when we get to the scene, it's going to be like after 2075. Jesse decides not to run away. There's another church scene where one of the guys 
sees Gwyneth Paltrow again yeah. and passes her. And no, that says coming by tonight. Yeah, coming by tonight. And then a bunch of the guys show up at the. But wait a second. In the background, there's a pastor who's talking about the the ramifications of the current cultural yeah, and he's wave like, happening. This rock and roll music. And at one point, I wrote down, "It's foul black music." Yes, that's what he says. <laughs> it's foul black music. <laughs> <laughs> Like uh, what? <laughs> yeah, these, these fucking guys. the writers here are like, well, how can we make them known that it's a racist town? <laughs> yeah, how many ways can we accomplish? How many that? ways can we accomplish that? So yeah, so then Jesse apologizes to sheriff to Sarah, and they kind of make up. Yes. Um. Then the sheriff and the warden talk, and as they're talking, like they're like, "Hey, like that music teacher, he's teaching my yeah. boys like the the bad music," yeah. and he's like, "Well, don't worry about it. I got someone to take care of him." It's like, "What do you mean?" It's like, like I found some dirt on found that found some guy. dirt on him I'm from Missouri yeah. that we might be able to get pin him for. Yeah. Cut to boys are playing rock and roll under well, the bar. Well, no, because they go to the girls' school. You keep reminding me of these scenes that happen. That is after. That's after. That's after. Okay. They play. Four pages of fucking okay. notes so on this movie. The, the, Four can, pages of fucking. You folks notes. at home can tell how invested in this movie we are. Uh, I'm invested by how confused I am about where we are. Listen, I watched this movie three hours ago. I watched this movie yesterday, mm-hmm. last night. Um, um, but yes, so they're finally play, playing under the barn, and then the warden shows up. Yeah, Mr. Bennett rips open the thing. And he's like, "Get out of there!" And and you he can't says, play that music. Who who did this? Yeah, and then, and then he's, the dumbest fucking thing that I hate when they do it in any movie. It's my one of my least favorite screenwriting tricks. It's the I it's, am Spartacus. I am Spartacus. Yeah, it's the fucking thing where one of the kids is like, I started this band. And the kid's like, no, no I, I did. St- I did. I did. And I'm like, oh my. I bury my head in my hands and just scream. I hate it when it happens. Why do you hate it when it happens, It's Jeff? such a dumb trick. Why? Uh, like, there are good versions of it. Like the I am Spartacus, I am Spartacus? Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps. Probably. But like... The Imitation Game is a movie that came out a few years ago. That uh, the one with Benedict Cumberbatch. The one with right? Benedict, Benjamin Cumberbatch. Uh, <laughs> um, and that movie won Best Screenplay at the Oscars. Mm-hmm. And there's a fucking scene in it where they're all where they're like, "If you fire him, you have to fire me too, and me." And then like a guy comes up from behind me, and he's like, "And me, I did as well." And, I'm, and they're like, and the guys, and the swelling music plays, and the guy's like, "I can't fire all you people. I'll can you keep your job, Turing." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" And they do it in this movie. It's so irritating. I hate it. Well, there you go. It folks. makes me so mad. Jeff really hates that in uh, movies. Yes, it makes me so mad. It does happen a lot. I will say yeah. that. But you know, but he puts Jesse in it's like. A eventually, prison. Jesse comes out and says, "No, I did it," and you yeah. know, I did it too. Yeah. I like that bit of. I liked that bit. That bit where all the guys are coming out and are saying, I did it. I know I did it. No, I did it. I liked the bit where Jesse comes out and says, I did it. And you know I did it. Because <laughs> like him and Mr. Benedict have yeah. had a history. So, yeah. Then he puts him in a fucking cage. Yeah. In a barn. Like, this was an episode of Law & Order SVU two weeks ago. Mm. <laughs> like, boys' schools putting boys yeah. in cages. <laughs> like, the fuck? Uh, Ice-T comes in. He's just like... You tell me they putting boys, boys in, in cages? cages? <laughs> like when somebody smokes yeah, too many I, cigarettes. <laughs> you work for the sex crimes division. You're going to uh, have to get used to that. How's, um, how's John Mulaney doing? He's going through it right he's now. He's going through it. He started performing again. I'm happy for him. Um, yeah. I hope I hope he comes through this. Mr. Mulaney, if you'd like to appear on a John Travolta podcast episode, yes. hit us up at TravoltingPod at gmail.com. Yes. You can even tweet at us. Yeah. At TravoltingPod. But um, so that once he's taken to the cage, that's yeah. when the boys sneak yeah, off. Yeah, all to the, the boys sneak school. off to the girls' school, and they all dance through a fence. This is a fucking weird scene. It's very, strange, very strange. <laughs> because yeah, they're they're all separated by this black gate. Yes, and they're like, should we dance? And then but, they st- so they like stick their hands. What are they through- dancing to, by the way? Nothing. It's like <laughs> de- it mu- it's dead silence because there's music in the movie. Yeah, there's non diegetic music. Yes. But in the diegesis of the movie, there's no music. <laughs> so what are they dancing to? They're dancing to nothing. They're just moving their bodies yeah, they're, along they're the They're dancing gate. while a woman yells, hey, stop that, from the upper window. Yeah. And then they're all running off. But then, who's the guy with the black hair? What's his name? What? I have no idea. The guy that falls in love with Gwyneth Paltrow. No idea what his name it's is. It's Gwyneth Paltrow. I know her name. It's Rebecca, because yes. she says it. It's her one line yes, in the her whole one movie. Ride. I'm Rebecca. <laughs> I'm Rebecca. That's it. <laughs> 
That's literally her only line. The yeah. dude who falls in love with her, who has a little bit more screen time, I don't know what his fucking name is. Yeah. I'm just going to call him Black Hair Kid. Mm. Black Hair Kid, before he runs off, he like comes back and says, I'm in love with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what's your name? It's like, Rebecca. And then he kisses her. Yeah. And then and he runs run away. Off. So while that happens, uh, uh, Sarah sneaks into Jesse's cage. Yes. And things get heated and yeah. they... they he wins the bet. Yeah, they do the dirty. <laughs> they do that. They do the nasty, um, and uh, they fuck, yes. folks. They have they have coitus. But you know what happens right after that? They mate. Yes. Well, you know what happens right after that? What happens after that? The cops show up. Oh, and they bust he, down John Travolta's door, and well, he's not there. While this is happening, there is a quick uh, insert where like John Travolta is walking down he's the street. He's walking down the street. He <laughs> sees the cops, and what does he do? He just kind of like turns around casually and walks the other it's not <laughs> yeah. like it's not like he sees the cops and his face is like oh, what's yeah. going on here like, and he runs no he just sees the cops and he's like huh and he turns around and meanders yeah, away hustles away that's it so um, yeah apparent so it's it's at this point when we learn it we'll learn well that Jack John Travolta is, is wanted, wanted for, for murder, murder. <laughs> <laughs> And everyone, and it's like, what the hell? I was like, this is a bit of a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking to myself, like, there has to be a misunderstanding yeah. here. So, like, so Jesse escapes and he goes to the club because he assumes that's where John Travolta He escapes be. in Mr. Benedict's truck. Yes. And he, he still rams through the fence. And there's like this swelling music playing. And Mr. Benedict's like, hey, he's on the truck. <laughs> and he bursts through the fence. Bursts through the fence. And he goes to the club where he assumes Travolta will be. And he's correct. He's there. And nobody else is there in the club. Yeah. It's just the I, two Molly's of them. there as well. I think very briefly. There's at least one other person there. Uh, um, cool. But uh, I didn't realize. See, again, Molly, I only saw in that a bar scene. She's not a character. So. And is no longer in the film. Yeah. Literally no longer in the film. But Schultz is like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, they want me for murder. And he's like, what happened? And so, he's like, well, you know. Do you I want was, to explain the story? Uh, do you want to explain the story? Sure. So Jack tells Jesse that like he was in a band with his black, black friend. Mu- musician friend yeah. they were playing at a bunch of mixed clubs yeah they're really good and then this owner of a uh whites only club mm-hmm. count to said i like you guys i want you to play for my club don't worry that it's whites only i just care about the music yeah. so then john travolta said like so my friend was a little nervous about it but part of me really wanted to do it just to kind of yeah. like you know show them yeah so he tells jesse that they went to that bar and he said the moment they started playing was when trouble started happening. And so one guy came up and stabbed his friend. He said John Travolta said he tried to block the knife, but and it went knife through went, his hand. And John Travolta does have a scar on his hand. In this in, movie. He does have a scar on his hand. That's That was yeah. foreshadowed throughout the entire film. Yeah. And it goes through his hand into his buddy's stomach. Yeah. And his buddy is like shocked or whatever. Yeah. And then he dies. This is not, there's no flashback scenes, yes. by the way. This it's is just, just explained. This is just told and so travolta kills the the white guy yeah he says i took a beer bottle and i just went to town yeah. on him and then just you know and then he fled then killed his wife and his daughter i didn't kill my <laughs> wife <laughs> <laughs> what is that? kill me every fucking time it killed me the last episode we did god damn it jeff you know that is the secret genius of the fugitive. <laughs> <laughs> is that? No, no, no. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay. We'll get back to this movie. It's not important. <laughs> the, the secret genius of the fugitive is that you cannot be mad at the cops in that movie for chasing after him because right. the evidence is iron proof that J- Harrison Ford did in fact kill his wife. Right. <laughs> it's like she called the police and was like, Richard, he's trying to kill me. <laughs> Discover stories that there was a one-armed man in this house, and yet, and the police even say we did our due diligence. We interrogated every one-armed man in the city, <laughs> and none of them were there. That's but what every one-armed man that's would say. Kind of the secret genius of the fugitive is that Tommy Lee Jones. You're like, I understand why he's going after this guy. I'm not mad at him. The, the evidence is pretty, pretty there. Pretty substantial. Yeah, yeah. I love the fugitive. It's, but, uh, it's pretty good. But yeah, it turns out he didn't kill his wife. Richard Kimball was, in fact, being framed in something regarding Provasic. It was a drug that had not been tested. Uh, spoiler alert for 1993's The Fugitive. An Andrew Davis picture. John Travolta is not in The Fugitive. He is, is not in The Fugitive. Damn, so we can't cover it. 
So, yeah, uh, John Travolta killed a white guy in Missouri. Yes, and now we are reframing this conversation from, not that a a black musician was killed in a whites-only club, but that John Travolta forced forced him into going, Yeah, uh, got his friend killed, Yep, and then took out his anger and killed a white guy. And now the tragedy is, oh, John Travolta's been exiled. Yeah. Because he killed a white guy, and they'll never... And in the race, that's, a, that's actually it, a line in the movie yeah. too. He says, "You can come back from this." It's like, it's like we, you can save yourself. Yeah. It's like I killed a white guy in Missouri. There's no yeah. coming back from that. Yeah. <laughs> like, how about killing a black guy? Yeah. <laughs> like the the tra- the tragedy of this is reframed to like, oh, poor John Travolta, poor John Travolta. suffering <laughs> suffering because of racism in this country. Yep. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. Um. But Jesse Jesse convinces him, hey. He says, you told me you have to fight the system from within. I think you got to do the same, dude. And then Jack is just like, it's different, man. Yeah. <laughs> so Very different. Then the movie gets the final scene. So, well, he kicks Jesse out. Jesse yeah. keeps wants to try to like help him, but he says, no, you got to go. And so he kicks yeah. him out. And so then and Jesse that- goes back to the camp. Yes. And he, from across the fence, he asks if he can come back yeah, again. He's so like, I want to play at the 4th of July party. This would be like the second really the third, but in terms of how the time Mr. Benedict knows, the second time he's run off mm. and he's coming back again. Like, again, I get the the concept, the metaphor of the story is like liberation from within, but it's like, just fucking leave the place. Yes. Just go somewhere else. But he, he makes a, a plan. So they're at the 4th of July party and they're all in their nice suits. They're oh, playing, And they're playing. This Sarah up, and Jesse talk also yes. as well. And he, he wants to end things with her. Yeah, and she's like, no. Because for some reason, she's now attracted to him. For whatever uh, reason. For whatever reason, he sucks. Yeah. And then it's the 4th of July concert. Yes, it's the 4th of July concert. Um, and they're all up there in the nice suits, and they're playing the you know 4th of July music. And then, what a twist. Just starts ramming on that guitar. Well, you forgot. What? Jack shows up. Well, doesn't he show up after they start playing? No. Oh. Well, Jack shows up and he's immediately arrested. I don't know what his plan is here. Yeah. So he doesn't make some triumphant thing. He just walks and is like, hey, and the cops arrest well, him. Well, so they're playing their usual stuff. Jack shows up and everybody turns around and is like, oh my God, it's Jack. Oh yeah. my God, it's Jack. And Jack hands Jesse the harmonica yeah. and says, I'll be back. Yeah. And then he gets arrested. Arnold Schwarzenegger style. And then he's arrested. So yeah. And he's taken off his probably I will executed say, for murder. Dear reader, he will not be back. Yes, he, <laughs> he will, will be in prison for the rest of his life yes. if not executed. Um, but as he's I don't being, know how he's gonna fight that. Like, even if it was like he killed a guy who killed a guy, it's still he not, still killed a guy. He still killed a guy, unless if Eisenhower or who's the president after Eisenhower, Kennedy? Yeah, Kennedy. And then, unless if he gets clemency, yeah. he's not getting out. Yeah. So it's while he's being escorted away. Oh yeah, they start they playing start the playing rock and roll. And it's stuff. like a Back to the Future style ending where like yeah. they're all up there on the stage and everyone's like dancing in the everyone's crowd. Everyone's getting jiggy with it, and everyone's like, "I guess we like rock and roll music." <laughs> when Sarah runs away from her dad, yeah, and there's like it, fireworks. Everyone's dancing. Seeing Jesse kiss fest. in the middle. Yeah, it's a whole event. It's crazy. It actually looks pretty nice. It looks cool. Yeah, it's well shot and well staged. Yeah, as you would expect from a choreographer. Um, to well stage a dance sequence. Yeah. So it looks really nice. It's compare probably, this. Po- probably the best scene in the movie. Compare this to the Staying Alive final show. <laughs> what would you say? Yeah, it does, does look great. <laughs> At the end of <laughs> Staying Alive, yeah. What, what, well, I didn't understand any this, of that. This is better stage than that. Than Staying Alive? Yeah. Even though Staying Alive, it's a, a professionally... Broadway performance. Yes. Broadway performance. Yes. You would still say this is better. Yes, this, this has more fun to it. Interesting. Um, but then this, this movie decides to, you know, make its final nod because, you know, it thinks it's such a progressive film. The camera shows over to like the four black residents of the town and they're watching all, all this, like these white people go crazy and they put their sunglasses on and start nodding their heads to the beat. Because this movie's like, see, the black people now understand. They like the white people yeah, playing their they music. They understand that we like their music now, and it's really progressive and great. It's like, oh my God, this movie has such tone deafness. Yeah. It has no idea what it's trying to say. And the, what it thinks it's saying, it isn't. It's, yeah. No. But it's, then it, the movie in, ends. Yeah, and the movie ends. That's the ending. That's the ending. John Travolta gets arrested. <laughs> John Travolta gets arrested. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, with Robin Williams getting yeah. escorted out of so the Robin classroom. Robin murder someone. Well, that's well. Yeah. Metaphorically, he murdered somebody. Yeah, he 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 was the metaphorical cause of um, that one student's death. Yeah, 
w- who kills himself because yeah. he can't be an actor. I mean, his dad's the real cause, but yeah. like Robin William implanted the ideas in his yeah. head that he should chase after yeah. art. Yeah, that, so he's thought of as the metaphorical killer of yes. whatever the guy's name is. And so when he's being escorted out of the classroom and everybody's like, my cat's in my cap and stay on the desk, yeah. that would be parallel to the students playing the rock and roll while yeah. he's being escorted out. Yeah. But yeah. And that's the end of this movie. John Travolta and, got the electric chair. Yes, he, he died. Um, so this movie comes out. Can we um, can we talk about one more thing before we go into yes, logistics yes, at sure. the end? Um, the hair ranking. Cue Ooh. the music. <laughs> All right, welcome to the hair ranking brought to you by the Travolta Team Podcast. I'm your co-host, Stuart Elmore. I'm Jeff Sweeney. I'm here to listen. I'm so there. I'm actually a fan of John's hair Ooh, in this. Ooh, spicy. So look at this. Ooh, that's spicy. It's it's like it's it's adult hair let a little loose. Mm-hmm. It's adult hair let a little yeah. loose. Um, he's got a little stubble and some chest hair coming out of the Ooh. neck. You see Are that? We including chest hair in the ring? Well, I just the overall package, yeah. I would say. So I believe perfect is number five, right? Yes. Put it above perfect, Ooh. below Saturday Night Fever. Ooh. I actually like this adult hair Travolta. It is very well formed, well fitted. Um, it's like a nice. It's just a nice like combination of curves yeah. and poof and slickness that I I really appreciate it. Yeah. Like, look at this. It's magic. Look at this. Look at that. It does look nice. Look it that. looks really nice. I agree. It's really good. So yeah, I uh, I'm a, I'm a fan of John Travolta's hair in this, and that's partly why I wrote four pages on this movie. <laughs> just so because of the hair. That is that concludes the hair ranking for yeah. episode eighteen. Shout. <laughs> So this movie's yeah. over. Yes, so this movie's over. How much did it make, Jeff? Um, so this movie cost $11 million. Whoa, I did not know that. Because Which, I know how much in it In modern made. times, is a low budget. For 1991, it's like a mid-sized budget. Yeah. But still, this movie only makes $3,500,000. This movie loses nearly $10 million. I don't think it deserved that. I mean, no one wanted to see this movie. Why it's, do you think that is? Uh, John Travolta was a has been at the time. Yeah, um, it's not a good movie. It's not good, but I, I would think like older white families, old, like the reasons why The Blind Side or The Green Book had made money, is what I would think this movie would make money for. Mm-hmm. Is for wider audiences to feel good about themselves, yeah. so they show up and watch this movie. Except those movies are entertaining to watch. That is the that is the greatest. I trick. guess that's true. That's the, that's the trick of those movies that they're entertaining to watch. They're yeah. like a hamburger instead of a snake. Because I was gonna give this like a I would get I was gonna give this like a forty percent of Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Like it's rotten, but like not a twenty or a zero. Mm-hmm. Like it's got some like good moments in it. Yeah. The overarching message is flawed, very yes. flawed. And there's some cultural. It's well shot, which is why I'd give it a yeah. little bit of an edge. Well and shot. Is good. Performance is. Bad except for Travolta. Bad except for Travolta. So. Um, so yeah, this this movie has no cultural impact. No. No one sees it. Um, gets bad reviews. And that that's base. It's very hard to find any uh, information on a lot of these Travolta movies from this time mm-hmm. it's because they were not successful. And, yeah. Um, they really didn't interest much in the culture at the time. Right. So that's basically the extent of this movie is that it was just another flop for Travolta, adding up to his like. 10 that he's had already throughout this time just another failure uh, and after this his next main role in a movie is he decides he's got to do another sequel to look who's talking mm-hmm. but before he does that we got to talk about one more movie oh, that we'll be covering next week that's right folks Tune in next week uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode discussing shout do you have anything last minute you want to say I just that's basically shout that's basically uh, shout. I, w- um, I honestly wish I had more to talk about in terms of half the aftermath of this movie. Like I used to have a lot of. Yeah. Um, there's just nothing on these movies. They had no impact. Yeah. Um. I think I. I wonder if there was a version of this movie that could have been good. There is absolutely a version of this. Um, yeah. It's called Dead Poets Society, and you folks should watch that. Peter Weir is a great director. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Mm-hmm. Next week you can tune in for what's pro- what proves to be our happiest episode ever. Uh, on the film Boris and Natasha. Oh, fuck you. The film <laughs> Boris and Natasha, um, a Charles Martin Smith uh, film. 
Uh, you can check that out here next week on Travolting Podcast. Please make sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that fun stuff if you enjoyed this episode. Um, you can make sure you follow us on all available platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. We appreciate every like, every subscription, every comment, anything you guys want to send us, feel free. If you want to reach out to us directly, it's at TravoltingPod on Twitter or Instagram. If you want to do, you can pop into our Reddit, r slash Travolting. Email us, TravoltingPodcast at gmail.com. That is TravoltingPodcast at gmail.com. The Twitter and Instagram are TravoltingPod. The email is podcast. You can find me on Twitter at Jeff W. Sweeney. Find me on Instagram at Stuart Elmore 95. And as always, special thanks to Rebecca Johnson for our graphic design and Michael Van Bodigam Smith for the theme music that is now leading you guys out. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Bye.